Now, as I mentioned at the top of the show, prominent Silicon Valley investor Paul Graham is warning startups a fundraising dry spell may be coming. My next guest says it is time for a reality check. Jeff Clavier, founder and managing partner at SoftTech VC, has invested in more than 100 internet startups and has more than 20 years of experience in entrepreneurship and venture capital. Great to have you back. Always good to so have good you to be here. here on the show. So what's your take on this? Given what we've heard from so many investors over the last few weeks that it doesn't matter what happens in the public market. That doesn't affect Silicon Valley. That's typically the, tr the case. However, with Facebook, we clearly heard a message which is that no, Facebook is not worth 100 billion, it's worth roughly 60. And that proves two things. One is that the secondary markets were really over enthusiastic when people bought is Facebook at 44 or Zynga at 14. And a lot of late stage investors essentially are in the red right now based on their own acquisition of stocks. So it's a reality check, as you said, as to how much a company like Facebook can be worth as it sort of scales. And therefore, when you think about investing at late stage in a, you know, a Pinterest or some other companies which have reached the billion dollar club recently, are they really worth that? Well, so the market is saying perhaps Facebook's actually worth more like $60 billion. What do you think? I think, well, it's a great company. They will figure out their monetization. Yes, mobile is an issue. It will work its, itself out over time. So whether they're worth $100 billion one day, yeah, maybe. Clearly, they were not worth $100 billion a few weeks ago, and that's really what matters. And so there's been a lot of, as if there was um, no limit to the valuation those companies could have, and we just are uh, settling in a reality where there is a limit. And so when you think about as an investor in putting your money in one of those companies, you just have to figure out whether it can grow in that valuation as opposed to saying, well, you know, whatever I invest in, I will make money. So what about Paul Graham's comments? Is he finally telling it like it is? Is this going to impact fundraising? So to be candid, because the number of companies which have been funded at the very early stage has quadrupled over the past couple of years, the bar to raise your next round, your Series A, which is really what happens with YC companies, um, has gone up. And so it is harder, and it's been harder to get that Series A for a few months. Mm -hmm. What I will note, which is sort of interesting, is that YC companies over the past couple of batches have been really expensive, extremely expensive for some of them. And so it's almost a case of getting, you know, those companies to get a high valuation, but then almost warning them that they made a mistake in the first place. So do you think that Y Combinator companies in general need a correction anyway? Or do you think this is related to what's going on with Facebook? I think so at some point, any company that gets valued by investors has to prove that valuation or grow in that valuation. And recently we've seen across the board, uh, but yes, with YC companies, that the valuations at which they were getting funding were actually much higher than typical market. And so one of two ways, you know, either you grow into that valuation and it's fine, you actually got the money you should have at a at high valuation, or you have a big problem because you got money at too high a valuation. We'll see over the next, you know, five to six quarters how the market evolves. In general, do you think outside of the Y combinator landscape that it is going to be more difficult, that investors are going to be more hesitant to invest at the valuation some of these companies are asking for? To be, to be honest, I think that it's more uh, an effect of the number of companies which are coming to Series A or Series B and the fact that the venture capital industry is contracting, which has a major effect on valuation, as opposed to the you know, the Facebook IPO, which is sort of disconnected because we are looking at a company which is eight years old and where Paul was pointing to an issue is companies which are two years old. So at the end of the day, you know, YC companies are, a lot of them are really interesting and, and great and have great potential. They just have to raise at the right valuation so they don't stumble because they ended up raising from the wrong people at the wrong price. What does this mean for the secondary markets where, you know, Facebook was trading at $44 a share? And Zynga was trading at like $14 a share, now it's at six. Buyers beware, essentially, because in those markets where it's really sort of peer-to-peer, uh, -peer, where someone puts shares on the market and sort of sets the price, if you don't know the fundamentals, and it's really sort of a blind investment, you don't have any information whatsoever, you get hosed. So are you saying that Facebook and some of the other fallout that we're seeing is part of a wider trend is this a bubble bursting perhaps no because by definition 
Facebook is not trading at 100 billion or 200 billion or something crazy that. Well, maybe the bubble expected. burst. It wasn't a bubble in the first place. There was a lot of over enthusiasm, and I think that that reality is, is settling in. So I think. All in all, I see this as positive more than anything uh, from my own corner. The ability for us to invest in exciting companies at the right price makes our math work, but also the math of the founders work, which is really what I'm more interested in. And so as, as the Facebook sort of issue looms over the value and people sort of step back and say, well, maybe I shouldn't invest at a billion dollars for this company. And maybe sort of this one is only worth, you know, five pre and not 10 pre. The right prices for the market might actually set in. So okay. we'll see. We will see. Jeff Clavier of Soft Tech VC, great to have you back as Thanks always. So